Ani Kinawea. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Welcome back to another fabulous session that we have planned for you all today. Uh, my name is Jody Williams. Mianka Jadakwe and Dishnaka Samak and Dodem. I am the Indigenous Education Coordinator for Duff and Peel, and um, I'm here joined with my colleague Kalinda. Really happy that you're joining us this morning. And just before we get started with Joe, we are a couple little items. So you'll notice on the, in the YouTube area where you are right now, there is a form if you have questions um, during the talk today that you would like to put on that form, please click on the link and do so. We do ask teachers um, if you could do the questions on behalf of your students, if that's possible. Uh, and we will do our best to um, moderate those questions. We probably won't get to all of them, uh, but we'll do our best to bring some of those forward today. And we will now turn it over to Joe, who will uh, formally introduce himself for you all here and get right into the amazing world of plants. Over to you, Joe. All right. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so my name is Joseph Joe Pitawanaquit. I'm from uh, Wequemcom on Manitoulin Island. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share with everybody today just a little bit about uh, some plant medicine. And so what I wanted to share today, is, yeah, it's actually super, super fun because um, this was one of the first uh, medicines that I was well, I guess that I really kind of learned about uh, the way that it happened was my um, my grandma uh, had this real crazy story of her son um, when her son was like uh, four, three, three or four. No, not three, maybe like four or five years old. Just he was just small anyway. <laughs> the way that my, the way my uncle says is that he was taller than the grass. So when somebody yelled at him, he could look on top the grass, you know, like grass in a field, not like grass in the lawn. It wasn't that small, but uh, he, um, he, he was real bad all the time. Jingus will say, and uh, he, he was playing where he wasn't supposed to, uh, where there's a big barn that burned down and he, uh, he stepped on a nail and um, just to kind of shorten this story a little bit, he stepped on a rusty nail and my grandma, she, she they can't go to the hospital. So um, they knew, um, how, they had to know what kind of plants to use to kind of like fix themselves because there's no doctors, there's no hospital. So when, when she heard that he was crying where that barn was uh she knew that he probably yeah had hurt himself on one of those rusty nails and there's a bacteria that grows on that rust and that causes a disease called tetanus that kills you so we actually get uh we actually get vaccinated for tetanus and uh so yeah he stepped on that nail it almost went all the way through his foot and uh he's lots of blood everywhere <laughs> It was real bad. And um, that's one of the medicines that my grandma used. Uh, she, she was hanging clothes on the line. And uh, one of the trees that was used to hold the clothesline was a spruce tree. So when her son came, he was crying away because he was bleeding and his foot hurt. And then he's going to get in trouble. <laughs> then uh, that's what her, his mom grabbed was the spruce gum coming out of the tree you know and um uh let's see here like when it comes out of the tree and it's like uh spruce trees you know like christmas trees and uh we call it gone duck and this stuff is called gone duck 
the resin coming out it's real sticky like if you ever get it on your hands you probably got real mad and uh because you can't get it off you actually can only get it off if you if you use oil so if you ever get this stuff on you and you and you want to get it off you need to find some kind of oil like olive oil or something like that that'll that'll take it off um you know what i had i had one guy he had he had a real fancy sports car like a convertible real expensive car and he i was giving this uh kind of presentation just like i am to you right now and i was telling him about spruce and i guess uh he left his car he went for a vacation for a couple of weeks or whatever and he came back and all this resin this sticky spruce gum fell on his car and uh um while he was gone like something uh hurt the tree uh like a, maybe a bird or some insects or something and then when the tree gets hurt when it gets a wound that this is the kind of blood that comes out that resin started dripping all over his car and he tried cleaning it like soap and water doesn't work uh use like solvents uh like paint thinners it doesn't work the, uh so he had to get his car taken in twelve thousand dollars to get a new paint job and the very next day he was at my presentation and i was telling him oh yeah just a little bit of oil and it comes right off <laughs> he could have used like a like a rag with some olive oil on it his car would have came clean real easy <laughs> So then he got even more mad. <laughs> His face was all red. He just he left. <laughs> it was real funny. Uh, but um, yeah, the um, uh, spruce gum, most of us probably know it. Like it's that, yeah, that super sticky stuff coming out of uh, spruce trees, Christmas trees, gone, duck, ABs, all the different ABs. Uh, but um, my when my uncle stepped on that, nail so he has like a bunch of rust with this crazy bacteria this disease inside of him uh this infection sorry that's gonna cause a disease and my grandma said you, you never use this don't grab that sticky wet stuff like the oozy stuff you always grab um uh you always grab the the um uh the crystallized ones, the crystallized type of resins. And, uh, you know, like, uh, because sometimes it'll, it'll be um, like, almost like glass, you know, see, see, it, it gets, it crystallizes, it turns super hard, like, like, like glass, like a crystal, almost like a rock coming out of the tree. That's what you always use. So if you're ever hurt, this is like, honestly, one of the most amazing medicines that I could share with everybody uh um in case of an emergency so what you do is you grab these uh uh these crystallized glassy looking pieces and you just start um uh massaging it almost like uh um it feels kind of weird at first because it's like you're trying to massage a rock <laughs> like nothing happens when you, when you massage a rock <laughs> but that's what it's kind of like you massage in this rock and uh and then eventually you see that feel that rock is kind of getting a little bit soft uh, and then um uh after uh, maybe a minute um it starts to be like really hard play-doh and that's what she put on his foot she wrapped him up and um he he's told to lie down for for uh, um, for the rest of the day, and they'll go to the hospital tomorrow just to see if he's okay. And um, that uh, when they got to the hospital <clears throat> the next day, the doctor was listening to them. All oh, stepped on a rusty nail. Worried about tetanus. Just get wanted to get him checked that to make sure he'll be okay. And then uh, the doctor already was like, "Oh well, he should have had a fever already. He he should have already been." kind of sick uh, he looks okay so they sat him down and then took off the the his sock and then took off the the dressing and then he saw that doctor because it because it smells real good 
the spruce gum like if you ever touch it and you have, if you ever do get it on your hands like it like it's super sticky and annoying but it smells really really good uh so the doctor started smelling as he was taking the bandage off and my grandma said he had a face that you know looks like it smelled real good so he's like hmm but then he saw like this uh real gross looking spruce gum because it's not the most beautiful oh that looks beautiful but it's not the most beautiful looking thing and um so he's he saw my uncle's foot yuck what is this big black hunk of uh like sticky mess and he took it off and then he looked in my uncle's foot and it was real clear it was just a hole he said and the doctor was freaking out looking at my grandma looking at my uncle like what is this stuff and then he just put it back the doctor put that spruce gum back and he was like whatever that is you, you just keep doing that <laughs> he's like there's nothing i would have been able to do that would help your help your son uh he said i guarantee you I would have just amputated his foot. If you came in yesterday, told me that he stepped on a big rusty nail, uh, I would have put him into surgery, took his foot, foot right off, <laughs> even as a preventative. Uh, so um, even so, he was like, the doctor was just blown away. Like, I don't know what the heck this is, but it's you need to do this, not not come to me. And so my grandma, you know, she just left and she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just went home. Spruce gum is good. <laughs> and uh, she said they actually that day went around and made sure that they had uh, um, harvested some and made sure that it was inside their home all ready to use. And so they would grab these uh, with all the kids, grab these super um, beautiful looking crystallized glassy chunks of spruce gum and leave them in paper bags there was some downstairs there was some in the, in the bathroom it was kind of like everywhere and uh, uh they always made sure they had it after then um and so i even got to use this so it was actually really really crazy because um uh when when i was um when i was young just kidding it was like 10 years ago uh when i first started learning about medicine um if you if you go to school to become a doctor if you want to become a doctor you can go to uh one of the most amazing schools i think in ontario or maybe even in canada is the northern ontario school of medicine and they, uh, um, you go through the school uh, to become a doctor. And I think that it's, that it's a really, really great school. One of the things that they do in order for you to graduate, in order for you to become a doctor, you have to live in an indigenous community for a month. And they give you a hat. They, well, they used to do it this way. I don't know if they do it this way now, but they give you a hat and it has a whole bunch of reserves inside of it, a whole bunch of indigenous communities inside of it. And you just pick one <laughs> and then you got to live there for a month, um, uh, you know, because there's a lot of us. They're going to have to learn. It's a little bit different in, in, uh, in the way that uh, the, the, the different type of uh, uh, approach to healthcare that we have and um so they have to learn how to communicate properly with us so they just live with us for a month as a part of their school and uh super cool so i get these uh medical students who are going to be our doctors uh and i get to spend two days with them one day in the beginning of the month and one day at the end of the month um, and I remember I had these, uh, these two, two, two future doctors, actually they should, I think they are, they graduated last year. Anyways, two of our future doctors were hanging out and, um, uh, the, on the first day we went to, um, uh, what's it called? I went to one of my camps and, uh, there's a real cool little river over there. And um, we went, it's early spring when that, when they live in the 
on the res with us. <laughs> uh, and so it was, um, yeah, it must have been, you know, like early May. Anyways, um, it's when the fish are spawning. We get rainbow trout and some salmon will come in and spawn in the river. And uh, um, they're kind of easy to catch then. So I took them there. And uh, they're, uh, one of the reasons why I love going to that particular river is because uh, the river banks are... Uh, um, how do I say it's like the river the water kind of like carves out under the bank but uh, um, you could lie on top and you could just reach your hand underneath the river bank there's all kinds of fish under there so you just reach and then you tell you could feel the gills and then you just grab the gills and you just catch the fish by by your hand because I don't know like they can't see you standing up uh, you know like every creature is so scared of somebody who's standing up <laughs> so they can't see you because they're you're on top of the bank it's ground and so they think your hand is like a stick but once you touch those gills you could just like whoo, just grab them and catch them by hand feels real cool we do this like every year growing up and uh and then you cook the fish on the fire and it's a really 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 good um i remember that one uh medical student he come out of the uh the house that they were staying in and uh he he's real real strong looking he's got a plaid jacket on he had a he had a beard and uh he looked like like he's he goes to the bush lots he works in the bush lots and i was like holy be a real easy day usually i have to do all the work and then uh we got out to the bush and then i i we got to cut some wood so we make a big fire and then all that wood burns down into coals i had a bunch of oak it was red oak and uh while that fire is burning down that's when we'll catch the fish and then uh, when we clean the fish when we get back, it's just a bed of coals. And then you put the fish on, it cooks perfectly. It's so good. And I wanted to share that experience with them. Uh, and so I remember we were cutting wood. I gave that guy the, an ax. Then he was holding that ax. And he's like, I never held an ax before. And I was like, cool, oh, this guy, he wears a plaid jacket. He has a big beard. You look like you're in the bush all the time. <laughs> he was like, no, I just dress like this. <laughs> so uh like hipster and i was like oh okay well i'll cut the wood then and then we went to the river and then uh uh i just lied on the bank <laughs> i kind of set this up a little bit but i i lied down on the bank they have no idea what i was doing they thought we were just gonna go have a fire i guess so i lied down on the bank and then reached in and just grabbed that fish caught it with my hand <laughs> that, that guy thought i was real uh um real nishnave kind of like <laughs> knew how to i don't know live off the land kind of <laughs> i don't know what he was thinking but he almost started choking started breathing funny because he couldn't believe i just caught the fish with my hand anyways uh these medical students thought i was real awesome because <laughs> i made a fire and i uh um we made them with just sparks and then then caught the fish with my hand and uh, cooked it and and it was, the fish was actually really good i i had garlic and uh lemons in my car so i stuffed that fish with garlic and lemon so it was like really really good then anyways i started teaching them about medicine and they were like wow this is so cool you do you like you actually use plants for medicine and uh it was super awesome and then I, I wanted to really show them something really really cool so i grabbed the tamarack tree um i don't know if i can find the, the tamarack tree um oh yeah right here i grabbed the little tamarack tree uh probably about the same size as this guy and uh there's all these branches on it. I wanted to take the branches off because we only use the bark. We use the bark for medicine and I, I wanted to just take the bark off of the trunk. So I was taking all of the branches off. So I had my knife, my super, super sharp knife and I was just knocking off all of the branches. And then I turned one of those branches like this way 
uh because because i i wanted to hit it like i saw because it was pointing down so i turned it then i hit and then that knife went right into my thumb and uh and i thought oh it hurts so bad you have one major nerve going into your, the tip of your thumb and then you also have a major artery going into your thumb uh and so these were not just uh medical students who were from high school and then they go to medical school they worked as nurses uh for in hospital setting for uh years before they could be accepted into that school so um they had so much experience and then so they knew like i hit that artery because the blood was like a faucet it wasn't like dripping blood it was like a, it was a faucet it was really really bad and um and it took us an hour and a half to drive to that particular river and so they were looking at how much blood i was losing and they they looked at each other and they were like do you have does anybody have first aid no no one has first aid and they were looking at me like they were like you're gonna look we don't know how to get out of here because there was so much roads it was you get lost real easy back there and they were like are you gonna die <laughs> and uh I was smiling away. It hurt a lot, but I was like, okay, no, I'll be okay. <laughs> and then I just did what my grandma did. I grabbed the spruce gum. I put it on my thumb and um, uh, the blood like immediately stopped. Uh, the piece that I got lucky, lucky for me, maybe the piece that I got coming out of the tree was uh, wasn't wasn't uh super super hard it was um it was just perfect as soon as i started uh kind of moving it around it got a little bit softer and then uh, yeah just put it on and then we watched those medical students were watching the blood stopped immediately they were like what the heck is this <laughs> and uh um because i put pressure on the the blood wouldn't stop so first thing you should do when you get cut here, everyone is always taught pressure that stops the bleeding. Never stopped. Just It just kept going and going. Then the spruce gum, as soon as it touched it, the bleeding stopped. It was super, super cool. So they were really impressed and they knew right away, like, okay, if it, that bleeding doesn't start again, he's not going to die. <laughs> and uh, so I took, uh, I wrapped it up i washed my hands and then we kept eating that fish <laughs> and then we had the whole rest of the day and then i came home the amount of pain that i felt in my thumb because i severed that nerve it was incredible and my daughter was like a year and a half at the time so she doesn't know her arms and limbs just fling around everywhere she kept hitting it and uh that pain only lasted about two days and it went away uh maybe two three days uh, but um, I had those same medical students two weeks later, we get to hang out again. So I get to show them more medicine and go to different spots. And um, it was super cool because when I first saw them, they said, how's your thumb? And I was like, oh, it's the same piece of bagu, same piece, piece, piece of spruce gum I put on there. And they were like, yuck. <laughs> they're like yuck isn't that isn't it rotten uh it was not but i said it's the same piece i wanted to show you guys what happens when i take it off so that you could see because uh, uh, the because uh, i said there's no more pain the pain went away and there's no numbness like i could feel the tip of my thumb because they told me that because i severed that nerve i will have no feeling there for the rest of my life and i said oh, i have feeling there's no more pain I could hit my thumb, nothing happens. Oh, so they're really interested. So I took it off and uh, the skin, the, you, the skin, because I, I had cut halfway through my thumb. Like I felt the knife, uh, the edge of the knife scraping against my bone. So like it was really, really bad. And um, when we took the spruce gum off, the skin had no cut, no scar, no nothing. My thumb looked totally perfectly normal. This is only two weeks later. And that the guy was like, he's looking at my thumb and he was like, let me see your other thumb. <laughs> Cause he thought I tricked him and that the cut or the scar or scab or whatever is on this thumb. 
So I showed him, no, no, no. Because you could see on my nail, and I flipped my thumb over, you could see on my nail, the nail was had a ha, was had a big cut through half of my nail was cut. And uh and so they were like, what the heck? Like healed without even a scar. And so I told them, yeah, so did my uncle when he got stuck on that nail, like he had no scar, the hole just was closed. And so my grandma too, like every time somebody died and my grandma went to a funeral when she was young, uh, these people could be like 80 years old, 90 years old, sometimes even over a hundred years old. And they're lying there. Um, after they had died, they'll be lying there and they have no scars on their skin. My grandma said, you know, what's interesting. None of our people ever had scars when they died. Now you, when you go to funerals, they have just scars everywhere. Like you could see, you could tell they worked hard, but that never used to be the case. <laughs> Cause when we would get injured, we'd be able to heal ourselves without, without their, yeah, without the scar tissue scars and scar tissue is weak. Um, and it, and it rips easy. Uh, it, um, it's a weaker inferior tissue so your body needs to replace that with normal healthy skin uh no scars your body doesn't want to have any scars and there's, there's medicine that helps with that so uh since right from the very beginning of my whole you know just when i started learning about medicine i i love the story of my uncle uh using medicine on her kids that uh, that a doctor wouldn't have even been able to accomplish, you know, that that type of care, my grandma knew what to do with a plant. <laughs> and then, uh, um, and then my experience with it right away, just with cutting my thumb, and then being with the medical students and, 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 uh, you know, them being able to observe what happened was super cool. And um, I really wanted to share this with you guys today uh uh well be just for that reason too like in case of an emergency um uh like you never know what you remember from from these things and you never know what kind of situations you could be in when you're older one thing that i do want to say uh is that just for memory's sake just so you can remember um just watch a spruce tree yeah, or if you look at a spruce tree, when all of this resin is coming out, what happens is spruce tree gets cut, spruce tree gets a wound. Um, and just like us, it's going to bleed. And the the blood that comes out of this tree is, uh, it will scab over, you know, just like us, when we bleed, we'll scab over. So you'll find spruce, spruce trees that have this uh, sort of blackish, darkish colored um, crust on the outside it looks just like a scab. So the tree bleeds, it makes a scab, and, and, and that, that's what sits there. So the spruce gum protects the tree from infection, from bacteria and viruses and fungus and mites and insects and everything. It protects the cut. It protects the wound. So the spruce tree is able to heal underneath. And then when spruce tree heals, the gum falls off and, the, and it's healed. So spruce uses this resin. It creates this resin to protect its wound from bugs, from infections, to be able to heal its wound. And so we just watch the way spruce tree uses this as, you know, creates its own medicine. And we say, can I use some of that? Can I use some of that to help with my skin? Because I just cut my thumb and I might die. <laughs> uh, or I just stepped on a rusty nail and there's no such thing as hospitals yet. Can I, can I use some of this? It works so well for you. Uh, uh, so I want to be able to use it for me. So really, really simple way to remember uh, that, you know, this is one of the reasons for uh, one of the, um, uh, and it all, because, okay, sorry. Um, it always makes too much spruce gum. It, it doesn't do just enough so that it could heal itself. And then that's it. It always makes too much so it's always going to have too much there. So you could take some <laughs> um, without really, you know, hurting the tree. Um, but I, I also wanted to kind of 
Uh, so, so that's really important, like emergency use of medicine. We're able to do things that, um, that a doctor, that uh, first responder, that, that science isn't even able to do yet. Uh, this, this process has been um, studied for like 80 years. How spruce gum works is really, really incredible. I wonder if I could just explain super fast. Um, um, it's actually really, really easy. So when you get a cut, you have a whole bunch of blood vessels that are, you know, blood's flowing through your blood vessels, your veins and arteries. Uh, and when you get a cut, that blood vessel is opened, it, it's ripped, it's severed, and the knife came through and cut it. So all of the blood that's going through um, will just will will pool out and come out and, and, and you'll be bleeding. So it's a it's those blood vessels that are cut. It, you have these little machines inside of your body. They're called macrophages. You don't need to remember that, but you have these little machines that float around your body and uh, um, their only job, they just fix everything they can find. They're just putting things back together. They're fixing things. And you don't really have too much of these macrophages, just a few, but they do a really, really good job just kind of fixing everything. When you get a cut, what spruce gum does is that it, you put it on a cut that that uh, what happens is your body will send all a whole bunch of macrophages, whole bunch of those little workers that fix everything to the cut. And their job, this happens really, really fast. Their job is to, uh, there are these big boogery blobby things that, uh, that um, they'll go to the cut, they'll grab one end of the blood vessel and they'll grab the other end and they'll they'll like bring it through their goopy body and reconnect it and uh and then they don't sew it up but they reconnect it and uh the tissue will fuse it, it's a really special endothelial tissue it's really cool but the tissue will fuse and then they go to another blood vessel grab it bring it through their body and reconnect it and they'll just reconnect until all those blood vessels are done and that happens in in it, it seems like seconds because you put that spruce gum on and then it's like the blood stops immediately because all those macrophages are called all those blood vessels are reconnected uh and then even the skin starts to be reconnected that's why you're able to heal without a scar uh um you don't need to create extra tissue extra skin a scar when the skin is just pushed pushed back together and held there by these macrophages spruce gum is the only thing that's able to call those workers to that cut. So it's really amazing. It's really fascinating. Anyways, the, the real thing that I kind of wanted to share <laughs> with everybody today is, um, uh, well, kind of like a little bit of history. Uh, the spruce, uh, the spruce gum, it, um, like how many of you guys chew gum? Like you get... I, oh man, I have not chewed gum in a long time. Now we got a dog, so we don't want that um, xylitol that kills dogs. So we really have no more gum anymore. Uh, but like, I don't know if there's still trident gum. <laughs> Is that still a thing? Dentine? <laughs> but um, yeah, if you, if you chew gum, the idea of chewing gum is Nishnabe. It was only it was done here, and and what we used to chew uh, was spruce gum. We grabbed these glass. This is really important. I don't want anybody going out to this guy right here and shoving that in your mouth, because you'll be so mad. Nothing bad will happen, but you're gonna be so mad at me, and you will resent this tree forever. It'll just get stuck everywhere. Um, don't put that in your mouth. Um, but what we do, though, and this is everything spruce, pine, uh, fir trees, um, uh, larch, everything that makes this crystallized resin coming out of the evergreen trees, you could you could chew it. And you got to get like the hardest crystal, like it's got to be glass. So if you do this in the winter, you could be fooled. <laughs> It might just be frozen. <laughs> so you got to watch. And so it's kind of clarified, like it's really clear. One of the things when you go to this one, it's pretty dirty looking. There's a bunch of uh, uh, grit inside of it. 
Uh, but as it ages, it clarifies and becomes crystallized and you get it really, really hard. And, and like, I swear on every, what you do, you just shove, put it in your mouth, start chewing on it. And, and it is, it's crystallized resin. So what you chew it and it just turns into dust inside of your mouth and it's horrible. It tastes so bad. But if you just wait 20 seconds, you, the enzymes in your mouth will break down certain types of protein. So all of that dust inside of your mouth and you can't spit, uh, you just leave it. And the, those, that all of the dust will start to come back together. And then you kind of move this ball around inside of your mouth and it collects all of the, all of the pieces and it just forms a piece of gum. It's in, and it, it's actually really, really tasty. Um, that first initial chew though, uh, and that dust inside of your mouth is horrible for everybody's first, first time. It's going to be very bad, but it'll all get put back together and you'll make a piece of gum. If you chew the spruce gum, this is going to be really important for you to remember. If you chew the spruce gum and it turns into dust and you spit that out, you're going to have that dust inside of your mouth it's going to be stuck everywhere so once you chew it you you you, you got to see it through and you got to use that ball of spruce gum to collect all of those other little pieces and the spruce gum will get a little bit bigger but that's the only thing that will remove that from your mouth other than like you know two two and a half weeks of brushing your teeth it'll still be in there it wouldn't it won't be a bad thing but it will be a uh, maybe an awful tasting thing to you. Um, but I swear on everything, it is a really amazing experience to be able to chew the spruce gum. Um, so uh, yeah, you find the crystallized pieces, you chew it, turns into dust, and it starts to come back together. And you have to let it come back together, collect all the little pieces, and you can chew that for like 25 minutes. What's going to happen, though, is it'll start to fall apart again inside of your mouth. And when it starts to fall apart, you just kind of spit it out. Or uh, I guess you could swallow it, too. I, I had one crazy lady. I taught how to um, I we showed her how to chew spruce gum uh, and and like a long time. Ago, and she got like some crazy um, stomach disease. Um and they were nervous about that, that it was going to turn into cancer. And um, so she started chewing spruce gum, swallowing those juices, swallowing that medicine. And then when the spruce gum was breaking up, she would just swallow that. And, um, and that tissue never turned cancerous. And so she says, ah, maybe the spruce gum helped with that. So it's, it's really neat. So yeah, all of those juices that are created inside of your mouth, they're really tasty. And uh, you swallow those and there's a medicinal value and they're a really strong medicinal value. Um, okay. So I, yeah, this, when settlers come over here for the first time, they see us all chewing spruce gum all the time. And they're like, what are you doing? And we're just, oh, we're just enjoying chewing gum. <laughs> they were like, this is amazing. Uh, and so it, it turned into a thing. They would harvest, purposefully have uh, plantations of spruce trees. They used red spruce. Uh, and um, uh, they would plant spruce trees and then cut them and harvest the gum, put them in these little boxes. And uh, there was even pants that you could get, pants that you could you could buy that had a big uh, a big um, uh, pocket that fit spruce gum boxes, and so you could walk around throughout the day. You have your spruce gum box inside of your pants, and you pull out a piece and chew it. And it was it was a thing. It even affected fashion. Uh, but chewing spruce gum was was a huge uh, fad because. Um, at that point in history, uh, in European countries, like sewer was running through the streets and uh, oral hygiene was, uh, was, was, it was something that was not very, very well established or taken care of. And so when settlers came over here and they saw our teeth and the health of our mouth and gums, uh, it was, it was um, like, how the heck are you able to do that? <laughs> and uh, there was the spruce gum was one of the biggest things uh, because chewing the spruce gum all the, all of the time. Uh, um, I wonder if I should say. Um, 
Okay. So in order to, I'll say it this way, in order to keep your mouth happy and healthy, if you want to keep your teeth forever, what you need is blood going into your mouth. Because uh, like what happens is bacteria will build up inside of your mouth. Bugs will build up inside of your mouth. They'll create infections and inflammation. And then you lose your teeth and you get cavities and the, the bacteria eat your teeth and rot them away. So you can't have bacteria inside of your mouth. That bacteria needs to be removed. The only thing that removes bacteria from your mouth is blood. The blood has to be pumping into your mouth and out of your mouth. And that blood is going to take the bacteria away. Our problem now is like all of our food is super soft. Like take a second and just think about the last month of your life. What did you really have to gnaw on and munch on? uh to to really break down inside of your mouth that most of us like we have sandwiches and uh you know if the roast beef in our sandwich is too tough we don't like it because and then the bread is real soft then you know what you don't even want to eat our vegetables or our fruit so we'll put it inside of a blender and blend it all up so we just have to drink it so what happens is if you don't use it you lose it if you don't use your teeth if you don't use your mouth you don't need it and you'll lose it. You'll lose all of your teeth right away. And then by the time you're 50 years old, you'll have four teeth left because you never used them your whole life. Everything is just soft for the first time. You know, you got like breads and cheeses and things like that. It's all super soft. We're, um, and so, yeah, you don't need your mouth. So what happens when you're chewing on something super hard, gnawing on something, you're moving your teeth around, you're using the muscles in your jaw, and a whole bunch of blood is going to be have to sent into your mouth and the blood is going to be taking the infection away. Toothbrushes, mouthwashes, flossing, that none of that is going to take bacteria out of your mouth. Take because bacteria can live on your teeth in the plaque. This is fine. It's when that, that gets inside of your gums. That's the problem. But if you have a whole bunch of blood always going to your mouth, always taking that bacteria out, then uh, that's what's really going to give us the opportunity to keep our teeth, you know, forever. Uh, so when people would come over here, for settlers would come over here and see us who like 70 years old, full set of teeth still. What the heck? Uh, this is ridiculous. How do you keep your teeth for so long? So what chew, chewing spruce gum is really important for that. Uh, because this is what this does when you're chewing it. It's not like a fluffy, uh, like I can't chew regular gum. I can't because it feels like I'm chewing on nothing there. It's so soft. Like you get dentine gum and it's like, or, or like some kind of bubble gum. It's like, just it makes me mad because there's actually nothing there that I'm chewing. Spruce gum though is, is really, really hard and you really have to kind of munch on it. And then it's, it's a little bit tacky too. So you have to, not only do your teeth like scrunch it down, but they're stuck together because of the spruce gum now and you have to pull them back apart. And so, so the spruce gum makes it all sticky and you have to like, you have to really work to open your mouth again. Uh, so what happens is the teeth are being pushed in, they're being moved around because you're chewing on the spruce gum, but also they're there. It's like you're, it's like uh, the tooth will get scared because this gum is super sticky and it's almost like pulling it, the teeth out of the socket. This would, this would probably never happen with anybody. I, I, <laughs> This will never happen with anybody, but you could feel your teeth getting tugged on a little bit. Uh, and, and there's actually millions and millions of dollars being invested into a machine that a dentist can create. They're trying to create these or engineer these machines that can pull on your teeth. If they can make a machine that can pull on your teeth, that's the, the, uh, most powerful mechanism to attracting blood into your mouth, into your gums. And remember, it's the blood that takes the infections away, takes the bacteria away. That It's the blood that provides nutrients, the blood that provides oxygen. So if there's no blood going to your mouth, bacteria will build, no nutrients, everything falls out when you're 50. Um, and uh, so um, that tool they're trying to create, it's actually been like um 
almost 15 years, they've been trying to create this tool that gently tugs on your teeth. And you could go in for a treatment uh, and, and this machine you put in your mouth will do this work for you. And, and uh, it's going to be one of the best ways that you could prevent tooth decay and uh, halitosis, a mouth infection and bleeding gums and all of this stuff. But spruce gum does it. You know, how many of you, like you have spruce gum probably in your yard or like around the corner or a park, it's a dog park. You go, spruce is everywhere. And it's even better because like in the city, uh, they groom all of the trees. So they cut all of the trees to keep them, you know, I don't know, looking pretty, I guess. But all of this resin comes out and, and it's really easy to find spruce gum in the city. I honestly, I go back to Wiki, my community on the res. We don't cut, groom the trees. And so it's important it's really hard to find good looking spruce gum in my community. It's better to pick in the city. Uh, and it's very clarified and clear in the city. We don't have to worry about pollution and stuff like that. But um, the, uh, uh, the spruce gum will tug on your teeth a little bit and just call so much blood, so much nutrients. That's going to take out all the infection. And so we're going to be able to keep our teeth into a very old age. And this is just something that we used to do. Something that we used to do on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, you, you, like, okay, so I, did pro uh, I don't know how many of you guys go hunting, um, but this is really cool too. Uh, if you go hunting, one of the things that you could learn or will learn really early on is that uh, you, animals have a way better sense of smell than you. <laughs> uh and and that's like a deer take a deer or a moose or anything like the sense of smell is incredibly powerful and chances are your prey animal is going to smell you before uh before you could see it or before it can even see you it's going to smell you uh smell travels so long uh, but over 95 percent of your smell as a being, as a person comes from your mouth. So um, if you could hide that, um, that's the most powerful thing to, to be able to hide in the forest from animals. And uh, the spruce gum, this was such a common thing. Like if you walk in through the forest and you scared a moose or scared a deer, before you would pursue any animal, before you would pursue any track, uh, you would choose spruce gum that hides your human smell. So you could get really, really close uh, to an animal, make hunting a much more uh, ethical experience. But the um, uh, spruce gum, yeah, man, like, okay, so I could, you guys probably get the idea. I could talk about this forever. There's so many amazing things, like so much of our health and well-being is held inside of our mouth. Oral hygiene is so important. Our mouth, our, our mouths, our teeth, our gums, tongue, everything. This all needs to be perfect. Um, and it controls health everywhere in your body. So it's really important. And like um, these companies knew when they came over here and they want to create spruce gum, make sure that spruce gum can be available for everybody to make money, to commercialize it. So everybody can chew gum. It was a big deal. Uh, I think it's like Henry or William Wrigley or something like that. Some kind of like one of the Prince names. Wrigley is the first commercially sold chewing gum. And it was spruce gum. Wrigley's gum obviously turned so it transformed and now we know like uh i don't know if you guys buy this stuff now but like juicy fruit is uh juicy fruit gum wrigley's is the company that creates that gum they started that company with spruce gum out in out east in newfoundland uh uh and there was plantations in maine and the states uh but this whole industry started out yeah as spruce so it's something that people used to do like uh, until like something that your probably great grandparents used to buy used to buy spruce gum the maybe the last thing because i want to see if you guys got any questions uh but i wanted to say too 
though that it is really beautiful too to choose spruce gum like it's not uh you know you go to the store you buy a little uh pack of gum and there are these little white squares and you know it's really sanitary kind of um uh um the whole experience is is quite sanitary this is uh very adventurous but also when you start to chew it you see like it'll be orange and red and they'll, they'll be all different kind of colors. So like even just aesthetically, just looking at it, it's really pretty. But then when you start chewing it, uh, your enzymes kind of like break it down. It always turns purple. So you got this big piece of purple gum inside of your mouth and that's just cleaning up everything. It's calling a whole bunch of new healthy blood. So many amazing things that are happening uh, when we chew spruce gum. And then, yeah, when we swallow those juices from the spruce gum, there's even more amazing things that happen there. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of spend a couple minutes with everybody uh, just to be able to talk about spruce gone duck gone duck big you spruce gum it, it it affected our history it can have a tremendous effect on our health there's so many scientists and engineers that are trying to do what spruce gum does billions of dollars at this point now cumulatively that has been spent trying to do what this plant does and like psh, got this right in your front yard you can probably start munching right now just remember don't grab this guy You'd be real mad. It's got to be like crystal. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wonder um, if we could, uh, if there has been some solid there been, questions. Yeah, there have been some questions, Joe. Yep. So I want, I'm going to combine a couple of the questions together. So some students were asking, are there a particular type of spruce that they should be looking for and is there's a particular time of year that they would be um best to get the gum yeah so the, the gum is there all year like like spruce gets hurt in the winter it gets hurt in the summer and it needs to protect itself so it'll always do that and so there will always be gum plus the spruce gum that you pick the crystallized glass-like rocks that are that are there, that's generally has been there for quite a few years and so it's there all year. Yeah, you have access to it all year. One thing about the different species of spruce, like I said, you could use pine, you could use spruce and firs and larch like tamarack. You could use any one of the conifers that make this resin. Spruce is going to be the best tasting by far. And there's different types of spruce trees. There's white spruce, there's black spruce, there's red spruce. Red spruce is generally from out east. Some cities will plant it in in uh, um, in, in town and stuff. Uh, but red spruce is the best tasting ever by far. It it tastes like it tastes like candy. Uh, and then there's black spruce from the far north. Black spruce. Um, it tastes really it tastes really good, but you could feel like. Uh, you know, it's, there's some bitter qualities to it. You could, it's not, yeah, it's good. You could definitely get hooked on it, doing it for the rest of your life. Um, uh, and white spruce, which is what most cities have everywhere, is the worst tasting. But even the worst tasting one, like it is the worst tasting. If you have, if you get to try red spruce, uh, you will never have white spruce again. Um, it, it, you know, it's like... Uh, it's like, you know, um, white spruce is like cocoa. If you ever just eat straight up cocoa, it's, it's not the best tasting. Red spruce is like a fully formed chocolate bar. <laughs> it's like real good. It's like, wow. But yeah, they're all different uh, tasting, but you could use all of them. Yeah. So someone else asked a question. Um, does the spruce gum only work on fresh injuries? Um, so they're asking about your conversation about scars. Would that be helpful for that too? Yep. Yep. So um, uh, for an emergency situation uh, in a fresh wound or a fresh injury, we'll put the spruce gum on and, uh, and, and just straight from the tree right onto the cut or the sliver or the whatever. Um, but the, uh, the, when you already have a wound that has healed, like if you have a scar, what we could do is you could get like some coconut oil 
and you could put the spruce gum, collect it and put it inside and sort of warm it up in that oil. The spruce gum, it's really cool. If you have warm oil, coconut oil or something, and you put spruce gum in, it just kind of melts in, it dissolves in. And you make basically like a salve or an ointment that you can rub on. Uh, and and um, that's the way we like to do it when you're trying to just get rid of scar tissue. Um, that seems to be the best, uh, the best way to do it. You know, it's crazy. What about uh, bru- uh, bee stings too. Would that work on a bee sting? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, uh, um, I don't know. It's like for for. Um, I mean, we got to be ner- careful about allergies. I don't. I um, uh, I have to make sure everybody has epipens and stuff like that. But the um, yeah, the spruce gum. Just in the structure of it, the physics of a resin. When you put it on a cut. Or, a, or a, like what I was going to say, here, it sucks out slivers. Like if you put it on a sliver for one or two nights or a wart, even you put it on warts, it'll suck that wart out. Uh, the sliver, um, you, you never, you have to ride your bike. Like say you're on a gravel road and you ride your bike and you fall uh, and you scrape your elbow and your knees on the gravel. Uh, and you have a bunch of pebbles under your skin, like you get, it's called road rash. You get a bunch of pebbles under your skin. Well, th- those pebbles need to be pulled out. And my buddy, his dad's a doctor. So I was hanging out and he was like, yeah, I've seen some pretty good road rash. So he, he described one guy, he had such bad road rash um, and it was an emergency situation. So every uh, sort of emerge is going to have a wire brush um and that's how you get the pebbles out you just wire brush get all the pebbles out and then you treat that wound uh and like when we get road rash we put the spruce gum on and go to bed and in the morning all those pebbles are inside the spruce gum it pulls it out so the same thing if you have a bee and venom that's inside of you and you, you want to get that sucked out the the uh, spruce gum will have a little bit of an action towards that um uh but uh, yeah, it, yeah, it'll help a little bit. <laughs> Another question was about the, the crystallizing of the spruce gum. Do you know how long that takes for those crystals to form? It, to- it totally depends on conditions. It, it can happen in a couple of months and it can happen in a couple of years, depending on the amount of sun and moisture in the air, if the tree is in a field or if it's in a swamp and if it's in the north or if it's in southwestern, it depends on everything. Uh, but um, yeah, so- sometimes it could take a while. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it-, it, can- it can form pretty fast, yeah. Someone asked, why is spruce gum turn purple? I, I have no idea. Like of all of the research I've done into spruce trees, no idea why that happens, but it's beautiful. Like uh, it's super cool. I, I've done it with school groups. <laughs> I had one uh, like uh, it was a, um, a bunch of Catholic schools there. And uh, uh, well, maybe like Dufferin Peel kind of area. I forget what they were called. Anyways, I was there and um, there was a spruce tree that was just full of the resin that was perfect to chew and all the kids wanted to try it. And I was like, ah, you know, we're in Toronto. You're, you you might be used to getting gum at the store. It's not the same. And they were like, yeah, we'll try. You get those like the guys in the back that are like, we'll do anything. And oh, yeah. It was super cool. We got like 30 people chewing spruce gum. All of it turned purple. So we took selfies with our purple gum and they they really liked it. It, It's something super cool. Something that feels really ancestral or primal when you chew it. And and just that aspect of it is really attractive. It was super fun. So I think that we're at our time. So I'll ask the last question was some were people talking about couple of questions are, are folks still chewing the spruce gum now can you buy it like in those pictures that you had so they're asking about what how many people are do you know are using that right now uh there's quite a few people that start to use it after we tell them 
<laughs> or after they learn about it, they're like, wow, you know, it's so good for my mouth. It's so good for my stomach. Uh, I need to try this. And they try it and you get hooked on it. Like something about your mouth just like wants to crunch on something. And the spruce gum really satisfies that. It, it, and so you feel that and you're like, oh, this is what I want. And uh, and and uh, once you try it, the, you you keep doing it so we went back to that catholic school for like three years now and all those kids still still go out and get get their own and maybe a few times a month we'll we'll chew on the spruce gum and and they love it and so i think there's a lot of people doing it not enough for it to be sold everywhere yet though uh but that would be super cool sitting at whole foods or something a box of spruce gum that'd be solid Well, I, <laughs> so I'm sure there's a lot of kids thinking about where do I go? I gotta go find some spruce gum to try it out. Um, I, so I just want to say chimigwich, which means a big thank you uh, for sharing your time with us this morning. And you're just like, I think I've said this every time, like just an encyclopedia of an amazing amounts of knowledge. And I hope that for everyone who's listening that you know, we really want to drive home this point around the incredible knowledge systems that Indigenous peoples from this land carry and, and how this is so relevant for all people to understand and know about. Um, and that, you know, we're surrounded, we live in this beautiful world and we're just surrounded by so much medicine and gifts that the plants you know, they just give all the time. They give, give, give. That's, um, and we're in this really wonderful relationship with them. So we encourage everyone to keep learning, um, keep listening and um, yeah. So anything, yeah. Um, any last words, Joe, before we say goodbye? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I'm just really happy to be able to share and uh, just anything to be able to get us back outside and and uh, and uh, just, you know, peaking that curiosity. Um, it's a really good process to be a part of. Great. So thank you, everyone, for listening today. Stay safe. Stay well. Summer is almost here. And uh, 